Hey, what's up? This is Scott Tolinsky with Level Up Tutorials. And in this What is Wednesday, we're going to be talking about Framer X. Now, if you caught the live stream that's on the homepage of Level Up Tutorials right now, you may have seen a little bit about Framer X already, and that might answer all of these questions I'm about to tell you here. But if you haven't and you don't want to watch a 40 minute long video about Framer X, uh, I'm just going to give you a little what is Framer X because a lot of people have been talking about it lately and I think there is maybe a little bit of confusion about what it is, what it does and what it's supposed to do, right? So Framer X here is a design application a la Sketch, Figma, Adobe, uh, Envision Studio, any of these kind of things, right? So it works very much similarly to one of those. And if you look at the interface I have here, this is one of their little test um, test application, just sort of designs here. And it's going to have all the standard stuff you're looking for in sort of a normal vector application. That's a UX design, UI design application. You can see in here that, uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, it has a component system similar to Figma where you can create a component and then you can reuse that component, update the master component and see those updates take place across your app. Uh, sort of just like any sort of component based design system. It's a bit more powerful than sketches where you have a symbol and it gets into be a total mess, right? Uh, this is a bit more of following Figma's lead where you have a component and you can just as easily branch that component off in a nice and easy way. Uh, and not to say sketches is awful or something, but these these applications, I think, have fine-tuned the idea a little bit more. And so check it out. We also have some really neat killer interactive prototyping features and some interesting design features. For instance, we can move things around here. Let's go ahead and actually select one of these. This is called a stack. And what we can do is this is it's positioned based on Flexbox rules. If you're a web developer, then you know exactly what that means. And when we drag this, the other ones rearrange and it automatically happens, right? And this is simply by defining this as a stack and giving it a set of rules. So that's one of the cool little things about this application. Another cool thing is that there's things like scrolling zones. I have my one of my own over here and we can open up the sort of prototyping view up top here, click this. And you can see I can interact with this. It's a little small on screen, but uh, I can scroll into this wheel if I want. And I can click around and I can add new touch zones and stuff like that. And these are really cool little things, right? It, it combines the interactive part of some of the applications that you know and love, like uh, Principle for Mac. It also includes some things from like Envision Studio. It includes some things from all of the different, these different things. However, there's one killer feature that none of these other design tools have that Framer X has that I really like. And it, it, in my opinion, it is the cause of a little bit of confusion. So check out this YouTube thing I have right here. It looks like a normal YouTube window, right? Nothing crazy. Well, it is actually pretty crazy because what this is is an actual React component, as in this thing is built with code. Now, some distinction. You cannot take a bit of design and convert it to React code. This application does not do that. It's not a it's not a React prototyping application. Uh, but if you start in React, you can code your component in React, write the component, then use it and share it throughout this application, which is a pretty pretty much a killer feature. If you look at this, let's go ahead and actually look. We have a YouTube component, and if I check this thing out, actually let's head to my components tab. If I check out this this component. And then I were to want to look at the code for this thing, I could do so simply by just coming into the component, wherever it may be, and clicking copy code. And then I have access to that code that I can actually rework and modify. And from here, you can even create a new component that's your own. Now, this is awesome because you can take these things and you can take the code out and you can rework it in your real sites. Or it's awesome because you have interactivity inside of my prototype. Like now, if I open this, I can click this and actually have a play button show up with uh, the actual YouTube video, which is not, a something, not something that other design apps do. In addition to this, you also have this uh, store where you can come in here and download various components that people have made. Now, these are React components and things like that. People can download these. And a lot of these components have like individual properties that are set via React. So you can have a whole bunch of customization via React. Now, again, I want to reiterate that this isn't, uh, this isn't an application that allows you to design something and then spit out some React code. That's not, not what it's made for. This is a design application, first and foremost, with the ability to use React components inside of it and share those components and have some interactive prototyping functionality in your prototypes. Again, this is the only application I know that does anything like this, and it's pretty darn sweet.
Um, that said, again, this video is not sponsored by Framer. They're not paying me to talk about Framer X. Uh, I don't owe them anything in regards to that. So uh, these are just my opinions. If you want to see me use Framer X for an extended period of time, check out the YouTube channel where I have like a 45 minute level up live that we did where it was like me using it live and I had the audience ask questions. And if you have additional questions in there, you can post your questions. If you want to see a Framer X tutorial series in the future or something, let me know. Uh, there wasn't one in, in the works or anything like that, but there could be if enough people want to see a Framer X series. It's a really cool app with a lot of little hidden features and things that, you know, might be a little bit tricky here and there. So definitely an option for a tutorial series on this topic. So check it out. This is Framer X. It's in beta right now. So you can't get a hold of it unless, of course, you're watching this after the fact. Then, of course, by all means, check it out. Uh, you can see that their website is framer.com forward slash X. And uh, you can learn a little bit more about the application here. You can get on the notified beta watch list. It doesn't give you a copy of the app right away. They have a long waiting list. I get a lot of people who are like, I signed up for the beta. Where's my invite? And I don't, I don't know. I don't work for frame. I don't work for framer. I don't know when they're getting you invites. So just hang tight. The application will probably be out at some point if you don't get access to the beta, but until then you can check out my live stream and see what's happening there. So as always, this is Scott with level of tutorials. I hope you learn a little bit in this. What is Wednesday of what is framer X. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.